the Jabra Elite 8 Active. These are the world's toughest earbuds. Really? These? All right then. Let's come back to those at the end of the video and see if they still work. Goedendag, we are DHRME, duo hearing really magnificent electronics. Those hardcore IP ratings on the buds and the case are a major headlining feature. The buds are rated IP68 and the case is IP54. They're also claimed to be the first buds with a military standard A10H certification. So that's the reason why I added ice cubes to my glass of water since they're tested at low temperatures as well. But before that, what everyone is going to notice first is the change in design of the case as well as the buds. Jabra had the same design for a long time until the Elite 7 series. The Elite 7 series will soon be discontinued and now the new flagships, the Elite 8 Active and 10, have changed up the design again. Not going to lie, the first time I put the buds into my ears and placed the case on the table, the case fell over. It has that rounded bottom and a flat top like on the Bowers & Wilkins PI7 S2 and the Sony WF-1000 XM3. Staying on the case, the hinge action is solid, no issues. What they have retained though is the flatness. And even though it's a bit bigger, the case is pocketable. The case still has a single colored LED to tell you the battery life. Sorry, colorblind people. Speaking of, there are four color options you can get the Elite 8 Active in. Black, dark gray, caramel, and the one we have here, navy. Although the buds look different, they are also very much the same as previous models in many ways. They still have the same rounded silicone tips and rubberized material around the buds. We'll talk more about comfort and fit later and we are super glad they've kept the reliable buttons. They support music controls, ANC toggle and summoning your voice assistant. And you get volume controls by long pressing the buttons down. Having physical buttons is a plus and a minus in cold weather, you know, with gloves you can still use them. but. On the other hand, you have to find a way to press the buttons down without pushing the buds deeper into your ear canal and then you'll be fine. But we much prefer the buttons on the Audio-Technica ETH TWX9 or the Status Between Pro because of their placement. You can check out those and many other buds using the link over there or in the description down below. The Elite 8 Active is advertised to last 8 hours with ANC on and give you an additional 24 hours from the case. But we put that to the test on our DHRME battery test and we got 10 hours. Better than advertised, just the way we like it. And Jabra didn't skimp in the charging department either. Wired Type-C as well as wireless Qi charging. Being advertised as the world's toughest buds is a confident way of telling people with an active lifestyle to buy these buds. The rubberized material around the buds is apparently there to protect any potential corrosion as a result of the salt in sweat. But it's also there to grip the concha and prevent them from falling out. They're very much staying away from the design elements found in competitors products with the likes of wing tips, hooks and neck pants. We're personally a big fan as those give us support, comfort but most importantly peace of mind that they wouldn't fly out of ears while you're jumping about. On the packaging we see some marketing from the makers of the best wireless earbuds for running. And here they're referring to Forbes' accreditation to the Jabra Elite 7 Active. So I went on a run with the 8 Active to test this out. And let's just say that I'm not gonna be running with these. It's not because of the fit, they stayed in my ears. The issue was the amount of occlusion which made every stride during the run feel very dramatic in my ears. Not only that, despite being in transparency mode, the noise isolation was a bit too much. It didn't give me the feeling that I was really aware of my surroundings. Maybe we're spoiled with all the open ear style earbuds we've had the opportunity to test and use, but check out this video for a short list of the best on the market. But if your workout doesn't include potential traffic accidents and you like to have noise cancelling, then the Elite 8 Active makes sense. Generally in day-to-day -day use, the fit on the Elite 8 Active is secure despite being an in-ear design. But in our opinion, it's no match for the ear hooks and neck bands from the likes of Shox, Oladans, Clear, etc. But most of those are open ear style buds of course, with no seal, no noise cancellation and worse sound quality. There is a middle ground with something like the Soundcore X10 or the Beats Fit Pro or the Sennheiser Sport. Uh, those products give you a seal with ear hooks or some sort of contraption around your ear. But Jabra clearly wants to steer clear of that. Now, comfort-wise, the Elite 8 Active doesn't compete with its classier brother, the Elite 10. 
Rounded tips on the 8 Active get you a secure fit, but you'll definitely notice them in your ear. That's not to say that they're uncomfortable though. We've been able to keep them in our ears for longer than an hour at a stretch, no problem. We couldn't even say that about the Sony WF-1000XM5. So it's not exactly a given these days. And if you want to rest after your workout, the size of these buds might make them a decent candidate to sleep in. It is a shame that Jabra only gives you three sizes of tips in the box, whereas the Elite 10 and many brands on the market have moved to a minimum of four sizes. I had to swap out the medium for the large on the right bud to get the optimum seal for the optimum level of noise cancelling. I did too. Do we have really matching ear holes? Aww. Okay, cancel that. Like we said, we needed to play around with tip sizes before we realized how good the AMC has gotten on these Jabra buds. On our DHRME scale, we put them all the way at the top in tier S. All frequencies across the board are cancelled out very well. I remember being outside and there was a party happening and I put my Elite 10s in and the party was in my ears and not outside. Anyway, despite being in the same tier, they're not quite up to the same mark as the Bose Quiet Comfort Buds. Bose just happens to be in an elite class of its own at the top of the S tier. Maybe we should have an S plus tier now. But the Elite 8 Active does better than, wait for it, the Sony WF-1000XM5. Then we've got transparency, or hear through as Jabra likes to call it. And in the app, you get a five point slider to adjust the amount of ambient noise you can hear. We always keep it on max. At the maximum setting, there is a tiny bit of white noise, but what we're more bothered about is the occlusion effect on these buds. You know, that feeling of hearing your own voice through your skull. It's crazy that Jabra still hasn't figured this out, whereas it feels like almost everyone else in the market has. But overall, we rank the transparency at tier B. Quite all right for a quick conversation. Some lower and higher end frequencies still feel suppressed. And like we mentioned, you can toggle between A and C and the transparency mode by using the buttons on the buds. It's time guys to talk about the popsicles, the icicles, and the testing. Pop, pop, popsicle, icicle, icicle, test, test, testing, two, three. What do we think of the mics? Well, in a nutshell, they get the job done. In noisy conditions, you can tell the noise suppression algorithm needs a second or two to figure out the ambient noise situation. And once it does, then the background noise is very much suppressed. The voice is reasonably clear when speaking loudly, but definitely more on the muffled side. So the volume and clarity of the person speaking is going to make a difference here. If you tend to mumble or trail off at the end of sentences, and I speak from experience, then these might not be that great. In the wind, they hold up all right. Now and then you hear the voice being cut out, especially when speaking softly. In terms of Fachmann controls, you're getting your answer hang up and mute straight on the buds. A bonus for that mute button is that it also syncs with the mute on Microsoft Teams, not something we see very often. There's also volume control on phone calls, but the gesture is a bit convoluted. Luckily, if you accidentally do a single press instead of a long press for volume, it won't end your call, but just mute it. There are a few more calling features you can enable from the app. If you get a call, you can automatically answer it by putting the buds into your ears. And while on a call, if you take a bud out and put it back in, it will mute and unmute the microphone automatically. It's like magic. If you're that one person who always forgets that they're on mute, then the mute reminder will be useful. You can also adjust the amount of your own voice you hear when on a phone call, which Jabra calls side tone. We definitely like to set this to max so we don't end up talking louder than we should in public places. However, if you want to drown out those noisy places, note that you can't enable A and C while on phone calls. There's also the ability to show you call settings at the top of the Sound Plus app when you're on a call. And finally, you can choose out of three different EQ presets for in-call audio. We tried this, but the difference is negligible unless you have someone with shrill sounds in the background. We're not sure how audiophile you are related to phone calls, so we leave that up to you. Although Jabra is a heavyweight in the office telecommunication space, calls aren't the only place it has some extra features. You get a few more like multi-point support. The buds can stay connected to two devices simultaneously, pause on one device and play on another. Worked well when we paired them with our Galaxy Z Fold 4 and a MacBook Pro. Although there's no device list in the app, you get two excellent features in the pairing department. One, you can hold on the buttons on both buds for a few seconds to put them into pairing mode. Now I need water. Oh, wow, perfect. The DHRME bottle it totally quenches my thirst. One, you can hold down the buttons on both buds for a few seconds to put them into pairing mode. So no fiddling around with putting the buds into a case and pressing a dinky button. And two, 
you can pull connection from a previously paired device. The buds were, for example, also connected to my iPhone and all I needed to do was to click on the Jabra device from the Bluetooth list and boom, it disconnected from an older device and connected to the iPhone. And as we're seeing more buds normalizing, there's also support for Google Fast Pair and Microsoft Swift Pair. Jabra is clearly making a play for users who are ecosystem agnostic and they're making a very good case here. Even Windows users won't feel left out. Beyond the connectivity, there's also an in-ear sensor which is used to automatically play and pause your audio when you decide to take a bud out of your ear. And it works. The only gripe we had was when we toggled it off in the app, but it didn't do anything. The in-ear sensor remained on. Bug or feature? Nah, definitely a bud. I, I mean, bug. The double tap on the left bud can be set to summon your default voice assistant or an integrated version of Google Assistant. And there's also Spotify tap, which will start playing your Spotify. But you'll have to choose between that or your voice assistant since Jabra has chosen to dedicate the double press on the left bud to either of those. Not sure why the triple tap is there in the settings but is left unused. Bluetooth earbuds have a large impact on the environment due to the way the buds are all glued and sealed together to make them as compact as possible. So when we spoke to the product manager at Jabra, we asked how easy it is to replace parts. He said that the silicone ear tips will be available for purchase separately. This is also the case for the charging case. Wow, what's happening with the light? This is also the case for the charging case, but the buds themselves, not yet was the answer we got. They're still trying to figure out how a new bud would pair with the case and the old bud. Sound quality is pretty good on these. I mean, it's Jabra we're talking about. We put these at a low tier A, higher tier B. The six millimeter drivers along with a slightly deeper insertion deliver on most aspects. The tuning is clearly going for fun. Jabra said they tried to keep the bass a bit more natural in the seven series, but turns out from their research that folks like that bass. So they've based it up. And workout buds gotta be bassy. Why do you need to research that? For me, the sound is very reminiscent of the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro we reviewed, except for a few differences, and that's a big compliment, by the way. The bass now on the Jabra Buds isn't quite as defined or tight, but very nitpickingly so. Sometimes the mid and sub bass tend to bleed into each other. The mids are a bit masked due to the tuning. Vocals can recede into the background, but timbres are very much on point. Guitar solos with busy backing tracks can sometimes get lost in those tracks. The treble does come across a bit spiky and unbearable on something like Mr. Who's the Boss's videos, but maybe that's not these earbuds' fault. If these buds had an EQ, I'd adjust that lower mid treble a touch. The 5 and EQ is adequate for rough adjustments, but not really enough to make a lot of fine tweaks. Now, there's no high risk codecs on these yet, just AAC and SVC. Jabra has abandoned its APTX friendship, and AAC is its best friend now. Or is it LC3? Yes, Jabra has the necessary hardware on these buds and has promised an update before Christmas 2023 to get LE audio support. Given Jabra's history, we don't see why they wouldn't make good on that promise. And this just shows Jabra's audio chops. We were digging into the LC3 spec just for the lulls and we saw that they're one of the contributors to the LC3 codec spec along with big names like Apple, Bose, Intel, and NXP. Jabra has also worked with Dolby to deliver Dolby Spatial Audio 2, but unfortunately enabling the toggle in the app doesn't seem to do anything major right now. We even tried it with Dolby content like Netflix and Spatial Audio on Apple Music, but the sound just gets ever so slightly duller. So we think maybe it's a software thing. It worked on the Elite 10, but we'll save that for another video. Maybe they fix it with a firmware update, but hey, we've got to save and report what we see and hear right now. Note that this does not have head tracking like the Elite 10 does, just spatial audio. Look, these are excellent buds and that world's toughest title ain't nothing to sneeze at. But here's where my brain goes when it comes to working out. First off, I want to work out real hard, but I don't do it enough. But willpower issues aside, when I'm working out, sound doesn't really matter as much. In fact, bass cannons will do fine because if you're working, really working out, you're gonna need bass to push you and motivate you. The finer details don't matter. And secondly, I want the buds to be tough, yes, but I actually prefer my buds to be cheap workout buds in particular because if they do get damaged or even worse, fall into a kracht as I'm out for a run, I could replace the pair without draining my bank account. Jeez, I really hope these work. 
Um, so premium workout buds don't really make sense for us. Also at 190 and dollars or euros, Jabra has very tough competition. The Sennheiser Momentum 3, Oppo Enco X2 and the Bear Dynamic Free Bird come to mind, each with their own pros and cons that we've discussed in this video. Another way to look at these buds could just be to ignore that they're workout buds because in general, if you look at the ANC, the sound quality, the design, these are just very good buds on their own. And let's see how that bouncing has helped. Oh man. Okay, first off, any physical damage? Hmm, not bad. So if you look up close, there isn't really any physical damage. I've been tossing these about. Um, let's see if the music works. Maybe the special audio works now. The audio works. Let's check if the microphones are working. Pop, pop, popsicle. Can you guys hear the microphones? I seriously hope you can. <laughs> All right. So the microphones work, the audio works, the left button works, the right button works. So actually tossing it around from a like reasonable height didn't really do anything. All right, let's see how these buds did. Are they really that tough? Oh, that's cold. But, okay, okay. Ooh, that's cold. Oh, it is playing, but it's muffled here. Ooh, this does not sound good. No. This, but... I think this one's gone. Yep, this one's gone. It's just muffled. The volume is just super low. All right, guys, this piece was shot using the microphones on the earbuds after they've been in the ice bath, the whole Wim Hof experience. All right, guys, it's been 12 hours since that ice bath and I've let the Jabra Elite 8 Active pray to its military standard gods and try to recover. And this morning I tried to use them again. But just to recap, yesterday I was hearing totally muffled sound quality on the right bud. The whole volume was very low and the bass was gone. This morning I tested them out again and lo and behold, they recovered. They are back to its normal sound quality again. So apparently there was still some water left in and it needed to dry out before it sounded like they should. So I guess they hold up guys. They are seriously one of the toughest buds I think that we've tested on this channel. So there you go. You've been toughing it out. And we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste.